Hello folks, Budbrew.com here, Arna Pils, uh, once again with Valentin Salafiev. Hello. Uh, we are continuing our series for the review of the basic set. Last time we talked about all the neutral cards, this time we're gonna talk about the green cards. We're only talking about commons and rares, because... Uh, They're much more relevant for Pandro both Pandora and beginner, beginner players. As you play more, you will get more cards and you will get to evaluate themselves, but these are the cards you will see most of the time at the beginner ranks, like ranks 20 to 25. So it's more m more useful to talk about these. Okay, I haven't really played or played against uh, that much against Fit the Force, but it looks really sweet. It cycles, you get a lot of mana, and green is the color which has the most of effects and creatures with biggest toughness. Yes, and also green has uh, creatures with biggest toughness, and the, the fact is that this card was uh, nerfed because originally it costed zero mana, and everybody played it. Right now it's still good, it's just n not seen as much because uh, creatures with big toughness aren't that good to play, but uh, metagame might change and this card is uh, always good, so uh, yeah, you should play it probably if you have it. So, uh, you, well, depends on the deck, but still. with b In big toughness green decks, this is good, yes. I really like Vine Vault, but it hasn't impressed me really much so far, but I see like its value. Uh, well, it seemed good to me uh, in the beginning, but the fact that this is structure means uh, the creatures uh, can't buff it, so it's just one mana, uh, save your uh, speed bump for opponent and create a forest. It might be good in the decks which require a lot of forests, uh, but or at least uh, multicolor decks, but the fact that it needs two forests means uh, you can play it at turn to uh, list. I don't know, I would say that it's not as good as it uh, should be by the looks of it, so I haven't played with it after the... well, I would. I played it with it when uh, in tutorial levels, when it was in codexes, but haven't played with it since then. Right, I do like Bone Collector, but it's very situational. Well, yeah. The fact that it's 2 mana 1-3 Harvester uh, is good, even though I haven't seen him much being played, but I do like him as well. He's easy to cast and uh, it's not hard to make him big, plus uh, the uh, baseline for his stats is average, so as long as you trigger it even once, you get the value out of him, so yeah, See, I think it's good. Right, uh, Gaius Grace, uh, interesting that this name is used also in this game, in addition to Magic. Um, basically, the card is okay, nothing spectacular, and I think the one that gives plus 5 toughness and taunts to a creature is probably much better than this. Uh, yeah, it's probably better. This is uh, like... Uh a cheap version of Runin's Command. Runin's Command is an epic card. Uh, it gives either plus two, plus two, or plus five life. Exactly the same cost, uh, which is auto include in any green deck. This is the fact that it, it does give three life is pretty important because life gain is important against some decks. So this is not as bad as it might initially look. But as you said, the plus five, uh, plus oh, plus five plus taunt is uh, usually better in most cases. Uh, Bloom Sprite's amazing card, I think. Uh, good value. Haven't I d don't have it myself yet, so couldn't play with it too much, but yeah, it seems good on paper for me at least. And I have seen people play it, but not much. Don't know what's the reason. Probably the fact that it's last words, so it's not as easy to trigger, and you need a green-yellow deck for it to shine. Uh, plus, the card is completely random, and I ha heard people talking 
in Discord about this card, they were uh, saying that it gives uh, like multicolored cards, green, yellow, or green, red, which was not that good. But yeah, the card itself seems pretty good. I, I do believe in it. I do like the green tower. I don't know, probably less than the red one. But I, it's it's still good. It's it's it might in some situations be even better than uh, the red one because you get actually one more activation out of it. Well, uh, it, it's easy to see why it's good because if you get all activations out of it, which is four, it means for two mana you gave uh, in total plus four plus four. If you can compare it to the other green buffs that's like twice as efficient which means uh, that alone is a good uh, quality so I do like it very much as well the only problem with this is that it's a structure so by itself it doesn't do anything but as above it's a really good one right uh, then you were earlier not super impressed with the seedling but I think it's busted well, it's uh, it's good when it can do its job. So as long as you do get it to five life, it's good. It's really good. But uh, the fact that uh, it's zero one means on the first turn of the uh, opponent can kill it with, with uh, any one damage spell. So uh, every either Falcon Dive or the red one, which three mana two one, which uh, pings somebody. And in second turn, anybody can, red has Safer's Wrath, and uh, yellow has the two mana deal two damage and uh, gain two life. So there are a lot of ways to kill it while it's small, and it's bad late game because in late game it might not have time to grow. But if you get it on turn one and it survives, then yes, it's busted. It's just a bit too conditional. And another point against this card, it has really bad synergies with all the, of the rest um, of the buffs in green. Because if you buff it with Tiki Piper or somebody or something else, it basically uh, decreases the buffs I this itself, it gives to itself. So that's another reason why it's not that good. But if you get it turn one and it gets to grow, yes, opponent is in trouble. Right, so Chieftain is good, I would say. Uh, yeah, giving taunt is good. Having two two body is weak. So if you need taunt, you play him. Uh, but there are better options. That's what I think. There are really efficient taunt options and shamanic dance, which is for which uh, is the one we talked about earlier, which gives zero five and taunt. I think is more efficient, probably. But otherwise, giving a town might be good. I personally, I dislike him since seems not good enough. Might might have some uses. Well, then we see a lot of funky free drops. Which one of are those you like most of that row? Uh, well. Uh, it's funny because none of them actually make the cut in the decks I play, but I would uh, estimate Shamanic Dance is best of them. Elderwood Hermit is good if you're playing some sacrifice cards from yellow. The problem is if there is no other creatures, then you won't be getting uh, last words effect from Elderwood Hermit, which makes it slightly bad. Uh, Tiki Totem is... Uh, uh, really good if you uh, if you're able to use it, but the fact that it's structure uh, means it's not it, it's not gathering you any fairy and it's not trading. Opponent sh can just kill it, but uh, that's basically like an enchantment in Magic: The Gathering. Uh, it's not doing anything by itself, but it's like Glory of Santon. It's good if you if you get it to work. Tiki Piper not so good because you're not playing in turn one later on you would probably want to be playing shamanic dance instead of it or do you have any experiences with these cards yourself 
Well, Ticket Item been played against me and I've been impressed uh, about it. Shamanic Dance also I faced a lot of times and I'm thinking about it myself because I think um, with a lot of decks against a lot of other decks uh, this speed bump on a big creature of yours to give it like even more toughness and taunt just uh, makes it sometimes impossible for some decks uh, and uh, this kind of stuff happening actually makes yellow and blue even more important because of Frogify or that 6 mana killer guy spell uh, you're talking about shamanic dance right now yeah Basic uh. basically the existence of such things and such strategy makes Frogify and uh, the si uh, 6 mana yellow spell events even more valuable well there are even cheaper options uh, like humbling vision which uh, t turns opponents uh, power to one yes but oh. you still would have to deal with a uh, uh, massive uh, toughness creature with taunt it's not that big of an issue if it hits only for one that's what I have noticed because when opponent uh, uses uh, has colossi uh, and you just uh, play humbling vision on it it's not nearly as scary and it's uh, really efficient because you only spend two mana on it but well, yeah yeah I understand shamanic dance is good and if you want taunts that's probably one of the best things uh, you can get it from so yes moving on well you totally embrace the elderwood embrace I think yeah I think it's really good I probably slightly overestimated but I really like it it's really it has overperformed for me uh, I wouldn't say the spirit of rebirth is that busted but it, it's interesting yeah I initially tried to experiment it but the fact that it's only a 3-3 makes it kinda weakish it doesn't trade too well with anything so uh, yeah it seems good but it's mediocre at best, I believe. That's w my opinion of it. Well, growth well only if you really need a lot of mana. And even then, I do feel the fact that it's too random is kind of too weak. I I don't really see myself playing it even in the deck full of forest, like mono green, which wants only forests for some big guys I disliked wild growth even in that deck so. right I suppose if it would cost one more mana and create two target for us then you would be happy about it maybe I kinda have trouble envisioning it I just know that when I had this in my deck I just didn't want uh, spending three mana on two random forests was just too pointless especially since there is a card named cartographer which is a 3 mana 1-1 one, one neutral minion epic for even though it's epic it create when it dies it creates one of each land randomly yeah that so. card is just gas yeah and um, well it's pretty useless in the end game but so is this and uh, this just feels useless all the time I don't know I haven't really played that much against this 1-7 taunt but what I've seen was from the I believe blue-green deck when they made him a 7-7 with that spell so uh, power equals to toughness yeah there is a spell and there is a creature with the same effect which uh, could make a creature's power equal to its toughness so uh, yeah you can make a very sweet deck basically just give your guys like toughness and taunt and then attack to toughness and uh, just w win in one turn this way yeah and also do remember there is the first cut we uh, watched the one that gives mana equal to its toughness uh, by using it with this you are uh, you gain free mana and you draw a card so you cycle well, it yeah but you do spend two cards so it's still a minus but you get a plus because for example, yellow's mana gaining ritual is zero mana, draw, uh, gain two area, and uh, it costs you two life. For this, you basically spend also one card and gain three area, so it's still better. 
Let's yeah. just say there is a potential for a very fun combo deck. Yeah, it was uh, slightly overpowered before they nerfed the green ritual, now it's just decent. So yeah, this card is definitely playable and better than it looks. Not the, the not best of the cards, but better than it looks. Okay, well, you totally embrace the caretaker, I suppose. Yeah, basically adding it in every green deck probably shouldn't be, but I really like him. Well, I grew to like that card as well, quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, the Saga My Warrior is eh. Uh, yeah, well, the cost is good. Stats are also good because usually it survives one combat. But it just feels like a bad trade compared to the other cards. Even with the Ancient Beastmaster to the right, which, by the way, the Ancient Beastmaster is auto include in decks uh, that want to uh, have toughness team because it was broken when it gave plus one plus one. Now it just gives plus one plus O oh, and it's still really good. Uh, but uh, Sagami Elder and Sagami Warrior. Are slightly underwhelming for me. Below, I, I rate them below average from my experiences. I'm just not doing enough. Yeah, basically, you could be playing instead of this guy, the guy that becomes two mana cheaper when you have a big guy in play. Uh, yeah, we have it a bit lower, and it's so it will. It's yeah, the ancient boy. Yeah, it's uh, really good, by the way, because 2 mana for 2-5 is a really good investment, especially with the synergies uh, green gives for 5 toughness guys. So yeah, the guy is good. Uh, so look at this whole role, of course Elemental is great. Uh, we both have mixed feelings about the Visp. Uh, well, mixed feelings as in, it's great if it gets to survive. But the point is that he, it uh, usually doesn't. That's the uh, same argument as it was with Seedling, but uh, in. Well, we have a lot of removal uh, in uh, higher rankings. On lower rankings, it might actually be good enough because uh, it's not as easy to remove without uh, epics and uh, good rares. Now that we have crafting system, uh, they're more accessible, so the Everbloom Wisp is probably worse than when I w w was playing with it, and even then it wasn't that good. Yeah, Orkling is kind of awkward, but, but uh, I think in a, again, that green-blue combo deck it could be interesting. Uh, even with green-yellow, uh, just look at the stats it provides. For 4 mana you get uh, 1 5 and plus 5 plus 5. Even though it's only in hand, it's still a lot of. Uh, it's 16 total. For 4 mana, you would get usually like 8 uh, in average and maybe 10 for green, but it's still not 16. So, Oakling is definitely a good card for, uh, for, for the stats it provides as long as you get to utilize those stats. For example, with the card that sacrifices uh, for mana. Right. Moving down. Well, really like the Guardian, one of the better cards. Very awkward feelings about the Golem because so often it's you're so far away from actually casting him. Well, the point is, if you're mono green, then uh, it's not that hard. But, I, yeah, I agree with you that it's slightly difficult, but as long as you're mono green and you don't have any better options, then Thurian Golem is perfectly valid card to play. Uh, and the stats are good, so, yeah, the biggest issue is whether or not, how often you can get the, to the fight forest and how fast you get to them. Yeah, basically... Uh we two um, helped me build a blue green deck and I really wanted blue for the Froggify and then the Vision to be able to deal with big 
big creatures but uh, because it was two colors and they went with elementals I took out the golems and replaced them with the uh, Verduran force uh, yeah but actually I think oh even uh, without even in mono green Verduran force which is a bit lower uh, is better because 7-7 seven, seven is actually better than 5-10 it's just uh, kills much faster so it provides much bigger clock and is uh, equally as hard to kill because uh, normally the killing the cards to kill Verdure and Force and Tyrion Golem it's exactly the same cards so froggy file and so on by the way before we skip on the Deepwood Grizzly 5 mana 3-8 is the main reason why I dislike the Sagami Warrior and Sagari Elder from the earlier because for 5 mana we get 3-8 the stats are great the creature is really hard to deal with and it requires only one forest even though it doesn't grow uh, or doesn't have any effects it's a really good creature in toughness based green decks you would want to usually play it yeah, also another candidate for the toughness combo deck. Yep, yep. Uh, Oak Flower is a just decent vanilla find for beginners. I'm not sure if I would play it in a, a mono green deck. Which one? Uh, the Flower. Uh, Oak Flower. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's... Uh, I tried playing it, wasn't too impressed. Usually you want something better. It's six six. Usually it's actually, uh, usually it's for eight mana, six ten. It's a decent stats, but when we're that expen, when we're going that expensive, I want my creatures to do something more than have just good stats. Right, Soulbound Sagami and Sith Sower to me look like just a decent uh, creatures for some. Uh, beginner stacks but nothing like that absurd although uh, in green white uh, with enough of enablers to sacrifice your own creatures to get value uh, it could be decent because basically for six you get uh, six ten worth of uh, stats yeah it's good but the main issue holding the soulbound sagami back is the fact that it costs three forests since you're uh, since its main purpose is to be playing in two color a deck uh, the fact that it requires three forests holds it back from being the really good card Th that's the main reason why I probably haven't seen him anywhere and I think Sower would be a card that I would only play in the mono green deck that really wants to play uh, that 510 the golem uh, yeah well there are uh, Epic and Legendaries, which also benefit from Forests. And this is a good beginner card because it ramps up Forests. It's not actually not that expensive because 6 mana you can save it up in one turn. Which, uh, and getting a Forest is always good. But it's random, so I would usually prefer Verdure and Force in its place. But, yeah. Okay, now it's just the last card, the Guardian. We can talk about that together wi uh, uh, with the healer. So those gifts gain some life, kind of mid-range cards. Well, uh, the the point is, it was originally eight mana card uh, and a bit bigger. Now it's seven mana. To uh, they tried to make it playable, and I'm not sure it's quite there yet because 3 life for combat is good but 7 mana and 3 forests is uh, kind of restrictive and as long as we're mono green we have other options which are have better stat distribution and more versatile this right now it, it has 10 stats for 7 mana which is not that good and yeah they tried making it better but I don't think it's quite there yet Okay, folks, there you have it, green, common, and uh, rares of the basic set. Hope you liked it. Uh, tune back for 
other colors so blue red and white uh, yellow in the coming videos and um, until then goodbye from me and goodbye don't forget subscribe until next time folks